Hello. This is technically take two, and there's normally never a take two. But I had a shoe issue. <laughs> so, I only briefly started the second one. The first take anyway, where I realized the problem. Okay, so, yesterday was a first world problems day. More annoying things than anything else. And some very sad news. You know, I haven't known a lot of people in my life who've passed away. Um, my grandmother passed away uh, two days after my birthday in April. Um, they listed the causes as a result of complications related to dementia. And that was really the first major exposure I can recall in my life to death. I wasn't, I was not incredibly close to my grandmother. We had a lot of issues. My mom and my brother were far closer. A lot of their, they have, they're incredible people and very dedicated to family, regardless of any obstacles or negativity. And I've often questioned it at times, but I certainly respect their commitment to family. I think it's a lesson to me. So yesterday, I found out that a former colleague of mine, a gentleman who works in the vending business, was killed in a car accident on Friday the 12th. He was in his Corvette. I'm not sure if he was on his way to work or on his way to going to work out for two different things. But the result was the same, which is that a off-duty police officer in a truck uh, hit him. The officer has, as of right now, been removed from duty pending the investigation, but there are suspicions that he was intoxicated. He apparently has not wanted to cooperate with his fellow officers, and so they obtained the necessary means to withdraw blood testing purposes. Meanwhile, there is a young girl, either seven or eight, I'm not entirely sure of exactly which one because I've heard conflicting reports on that, who has lost her father. When I learned about this, Yesterday morning, that was very sad, and later in the evening, when I got home, I researched uh, his name on Facebook, and his profile picture was a picture of his dog. And when you click on that picture and followed the chain, you discovered that a number of his profile pictures were him with his daughter. So obviously this was a very dedicated father who loved his child very much. I've heard that from the people who were closer to him too. And it's just, 
another example of how much or how sad it is when people don't consider other people when they go about their actions, how it will affect other families. And of course, when you're intoxicated, you're not thinking clearly, but you should have some kind of a rule, especially if you're in law enforcement and you deal with this problem. You should have some kind of a logic that says, okay, I'm gonna be drinking. I have to I have to avoid driving. With ride services as they are these days, I'm sure, I'm sure you can afford to take an Uber. They're cheap. And someone would not be gone as a result of it. A father with a young daughter who will never get to know her father. Do not drink and drive. Do not be under the influence of any kind of liquid, chemical, substance, anything, and get behind the wheel of a half ton, quarter ton, 20 pound bike, for all that matters. You're putting yourself, then you're putting other people at risk for absolutely no reason whatsoever, other than you are being stupid. They're still planning his funeral. And it should be in the next couple of days. I hope the little girl gets extra blessings in her life because of her loss. It will never replace her father. but maybe she deserves a little bit of an advantage. Anyone who's lost someone in situations and circumstances like that, maybe they deserve a few bonuses, especially children. So my you know, annoyances of the day started with getting locked in my garage. I I live in a complex that is highly secure. You have to have a key fob to do everything. And I had to move some material on a couple of trips to my vehicle. And knowing that I was going to come back and lock my door, I left the keys in the door, went into the garage, door closed behind me, and I could not get back inside the building. The challenge is, in order to get in and out of the parking garage, you also have to have a fob. So I was trapped inside of my garage and had to wait until someone drove out of the garage so I could follow them out, walk around to the front of the building, and attempt to use the uh, call pad to try and call myself so I could let myself in. 
So I finally get around to the call pad about 20 minutes later. It doesn't want to work at first, apparently. <laughs> and when I finally do get it to dial me, my phone goes straight to voicemail. Twice. It took me half an hour to get back inside of my apartment. Inside of the building. Well, out of and then back inside the building. Man, oh man. That's annoying. Then, of course, I heard the news of my colleague's passing. And went to work. And then while I was doing work, I got someone who came in and informed me that they had hit the back of my vehicle. <laughs> there wasn't any significant damage that would you know make the vehicle undrivable but it did damage a lift that I have on the back of my vehicle and then it spent a considerable amount of time pulling out paperwork well, that's considerable, that's exaggerated. I spent um, probably the better part of two hours filling out paperwork, answering questions, even though I wasn't present when it happened. And then another hour or an hour and a half later, seeing if I could fix the issue, because the person who uh, backed into my vehicle was on duty at the time and I'm absolutely sure it was an accident but because the rain it's very deceiving when there's rain and if I cannot solve the issue myself then I have to report it for repair purposes to this individual's job and that could result in disciplinary action against that person, which just is unnecessary when they had no malice intent. So, did some stuff yesterday afternoon to try and see if it will resolve the issue. And we shall see if today it does. And if it does, then I can just say, no, no big deal. Don't worry about it. It's all, it's all fine. No need to file a report, and we all move on. So, those were my little first world issues yesterday. Obviously, you know which one was the most significant. You know, the last few days. Well, the last thirty-six hours. <sighs> Continue to realize more and more how important it is that we take advantage of the time we have now. I'm not telling you to jump off the cliff professionally and quit your job and move to LA and do stand-up like Billy Joel talks about in his song. But I'm talking about taking steps towards moving to a place where you're happier and you feel like you're doing the things you really want to be doing. I spend a short period of time during the week doing work that's not my favorite. That just pays the bills, effectively. But it's not my passion. It's 
not where my heart lies. And any time spent doing something, any significant period of time spent doing something that where your heart doesn't lie is not good on your soul, your spirit, your energy. I'm grateful for what I have. Please don't misinterpret that. I'm very grateful. And I take it very seriously. And I'm grateful for the people I've gotten to meet as a result of it. I just know there's something more significant for me that I need to be focusing my energy on doing and I could have been. And that's possibly where my thought lies most is I should be further along. But I took a break for a while because I was trying to find validation in other people for a certain period of my life. And I lost a lot of time. And so now I'm very aware of that. And it revolves in my brain to a point where I've made it a significant priority that I want to improve to a point where I can really spend the quality time doing the things I really want to do. And all time is quality. Also take care of my family better. My mom and my brother. And I would really like to meet someone. I got to spend a nice evening with someone the other day. I'm still looking for, I don't think that it's her, and not in the sense of the negative way, I mean, I don't think that the way I feel is results of her not being charming, because she's very charming, very nice, seems to have a very strong mindset of what she wants to do. It's just something Something specific I'm looking for. And you know it. I think you know it if you really listen to yourself, you know it. And you don't deceive yourself by going for something purely before the in the moment of instant gratification. And the feeling, oh look at someone. Or the feeling of, oh, I feel attractive, or whatever else. It's just something. And yesterday was a big reminder on a number of levels. One more of, one above all, about that feeling. So. There you have it. I didn't know if we were, um, <laughs> I didn't even think to look at the machine to see if we were still on a normal setting. So there's three treadmills in this space where I am. And this is the first one with this light that's a very solid lighting for the video. And it's normally set to 20 minutes but I'm sure you can adjust it. <laughs> and I didn't bother to think, think to see if you could adjust it, see? But I didn't need to. <laughs> Lessons we learn during the day. I'm looking forward to the iPhone 7 coming out. The um, iPhone 6 Plus S apparently has 4K video recording, which is pretty cool. I don't know what the compression rate is, but I do know, but I do know a number of short films 
I've been shot on. So, thinking significantly about shooting the short film on the iPhone 6s Plus, or the iPhone 7, which is supposed to come out, or at least be announced on September 7th, from what I hear. I would like to do two short films and submit three scripts to competitions and get some exposure that way over the next, the four years then, let's put it that way. I'm grateful to you, anyone who's watching this, and if even one person gets one nugget that makes them feel better or inspires them to take a step, doesn't matter where you got it from. All that matters is that you got it. And this is left to the universe now. Hopefully it attracts positive like as it's intended with that. Well, I'm not sure if it's a little hard for me to see because of my out of sight challenge. And the even though the light's good for purposes of not making me look like the shadow, I don't know if uh, I can't read the display because it causes a glare. Um, this eye right here, it uh, gets, it's uh, sensitive to light because for some reason I think the fog within my eye because of glaucoma, causes a glare of sorts. But then when light hits it, it almost is like overexposure. And so things in front of me, even though I can see shapes to some degree, uh, you know, I, mean, I can see the camera and see myself on the visual, but detail I can't. And I can't see this uh, little monitor screen and see if, uh, the walk's almost done, the cool down. But I hope you got to you listen to me ramble. <laughs> and um, please, please, please think about it before you get behind the wheel of a car or anything that a scooter even, if you're intoxicated, because you never know who you're going to run into. And the circumstances just have to be just can, can just fall into place where someone could fall and hit their head, break an arm, break a leg. Just think before you start operating anything, or before you do anything when you're intoxicated. Remember that when we go out in public, it's not just our life, it's other people's life and safety. We have a responsibility to. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. Be well.